Hey, welcome back to the Bootstrap 4 Alpha tutorial. My name is Brad from bradhussey.ca and codecollege.ca. And in this video, I'm gonna show you my custom SaaS workflow for Bootstrap projects. All right, so in the final course files that you downloaded a little while back in the course files download lecture, you'll be given a folder here with everything that we've been working on. Specifically, there is a styles folder with some some SAS in it, some SCSS files in it. And this is my basic workflow for professional projects when I work on bootstrap websites. And I'm gonna run through that with you and show you how it works and how you can use it for your own projects. So the first thing I want you to do is take the styles folder and copy it into your bootstrap for folder that you've been working on. So I'm just gonna take that and I'm gonna copy it into that folder here. So we have access to it right here. So now in my code editor, I can actually see it here under styles. So you'll see that there are a few files. There is underscore base.scss. This is where you're gonna add your base styles. So just your, your CSS. When you're styling your body, you're styling the divs, the typography, all that sort of stuff. This is the very basic way of working with SAS. You can add all your CSS in here. Now, what's suggested is as you work and as your CSS file grows, you split it up into certain separate partials. So instead of just everything being in base.scss, you can also have a file called typography.scss or components.scss or buttons.scss where you'll just style the buttons or you'll just style certain components or you'll just style the typography. So as your CSS file grows, you will want to split it out into separate partials and import them. Now I'll show you where that happens. In your app.scss file, this one is not a partial. It's the one that is going to load everything. So as you can see here, we're loading the project variables right here. So we're importing the Bower Components Bootstrap SCSS variables. So this is importing the, the Bootstrap variables themselves straight from our Bower Components folder. And if you didn't use Bower Components, wherever your native Bootstrap download is, it's pulling the variables SAS file. And then we're importing our variables file, which is right here, which is essentially a direct clone of the Bootstrap variables file but with everything commented out because by default we want to use the bootstrap variables and styles but if we want to override them instead of going into our native bootstrap download and customizing straight in here which is not recommended because you will lose your changes when you update to a new version of bootstrap you have your own copy here so all you have to do is just uncomment a line and change the value and then there you go. Now that variable has been overwritten with your custom variable and you'll never lose that unless you delete it of course. So then I'm going to go here back in my app.scss file. So then the next thing that we're doing is importing required bootstrap SAS files. And as you can see everything here is commented out and you might be wondering why. The reason is I don't want to have everything that Bootstrap has to offer. What if I'm making a very simple landing page where I just need access to the grid, maybe I need access to the some of the mix-ins, you know, maybe the tables and the forms, and that's it. What if I don't want all the print styles, the reboot, the type, the images, the code, the buttons, animations, drop-downs, blah, 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 blah. There's a lot that Bootstrap gives you that you don't use, and that's a huge waste of space that makes your site massive for no reason when you're only using 2% of it, of Bootstrap. So that's what this is all about. You're importing all of Bootstrap's SAS files. So we got our variables, that's important. We want that to be in there. And then we are importing whatever we want, we can pick and choose. So if I wanna import just the core mixins, I'm gonna uncomment that. If I, wanna, if I want to include the reset and dependencies, I'll import those. Now for core CSS, if I want to import only the forms, I'll just do that, so on and so forth. And then at the very, very, very bottom, we're importing our base styles at the very end because we want to overwrite bootstrap styles. Ours needs to be at the very end of our SAS file. 
So we're importing base, which is this right here. And this is where your CSS is going to go. So it'll import that last. So now that I've shown you that, what I want to do is I'm going to put that all back the way it was. And we're going to tell SAS to watch and compile what we change here. And we're going to start out with just our terminal because I'm assuming not everybody has access to CodeKit. So we're just going to use the command line. So I'm going to open up terminal here. And what we're going to do here is we're going to tell SAS to watch and compile the styles in our styles folder that we just added to our project. So I'm going to change my directory here. I'm going to jump into my bootstrap four folder and I'm going to say SAS watch my styles folder and compile the CSS to styles slash CSS because there is a CSS folder within that styles folder. So now it's going to already do its initial compile. It's compiled app.css and I'm going to go back to my code editor here and just to show you in my CSS folder, we now have app.css, which looks like this, nothing. It has absolutely nothing in it, which is great. That's exactly what we want. We want it to have no bootstrap and no styles by default so that when we add our own styles, you'll start to see them appear. And that's what I want to do right now just to show you. So let's go into our app.scss. And so the first thing here that is going to be imported are the variables and then our variables if we want to override them. Now, there's nothing, there's no CSS that will be compiled from these files because this is just, these are just variables. Var variables don't actually create CSS. Variables are where we add certain CSS uh, styles that we can pull from globally throughout our site. Now, where you'll start seeing some CSS being added to our CSS file is when we start uncommenting some of these. Core mixins, these are also a bunch of uh, mixins and variables where you can uh, pull from. So if I were to import that, it's not actually going to give me any CSS yet. That's just allowing me to access certain mixins like transitions or animations. Reset and dependencies. This is where some CSS will happen. So let's uncomment, normalize, and print. Just that. Let's save. And now let's look at our app.css file. Look what's that, look at what changed. We got normalize and print. So we've got normalize and print sitting in our CSS file. And that's it. So why don't we go through and just add some more? Well, we've got core CSS. Let's add the bootstrap reboot. Let's say I don't want any of these, but I want access to the modal window. So the CSS that is involved uh, or associated with that. And let's say I also want access to, I don't know, utilities, just something, something simple like that. If I save this, now my app.css file is going to be bigger. So now we've got core CSS. And then below here, we've got some more components with JavaScript. We've got the modal styles. We've got utility classes like the clear fix and the pulls and text justifies and so on and so forth. And then that's all. And now what if we wanted to add our own styles? So these are bootstrap. This is all I pulled from bootstrap. Now what if I want to just add my own custom styles? Well, I would go to base and I'd say something like my custom ID background pink. Save that. Now if I go to app.css, so there it is, my custom ID. And these are my own custom styles from our base.scss right here. Now, how does this play into our current site? What if we wanted to tie this into our startup website that we built? This one right here. Currently, this is just using plain vanilla CSS. What if we wanted to make this SAS? What if we wanted to SASify it? Well, let's go back to our code editor here. Let's restart everything here. Let's, I'm going to remove these, this style here, and I'm going to go back to my app.css or scss, and I'm going to comment those back out. And we're going to start a little bit from scratch here. All right, so I have everything commented out in my app.scss file, and variables, it's all commented out as well. What I need to do here is simply tell my startup.html file, instead of looking for startup.css, which is my plain vanilla CSS here, look for styles.css app.css. So now styles 
CSS, app.css. That is the custom CSS it's going to pull from. And then the other thing you want to do is remove the bootstrap CSS connection here because we don't need to grab the minified version anymore because we're going to be exporting our own version. We don't want to have access to this anymore. So I'm going to actually, let's just comment it out. So now here's our custom CSS. If I save this and check out our site, there's no styles whatsoever. It's just a straight up HTML page. Now watch what happens once we start importing little bit by little bit. I'm going to go to my app.scss and start importing some of the more important bootstrap core styles. So I'm going to import the core mixins. We're going to need these dependencies. Core CSS, well, we're going to need the reboot, the type. We're not going to need images. We didn't do any image styles. We definitely need the grid. We didn't use tables. Let's add buttons. What else did we have access to? The drop down in the nav bar for sure. We need access to nav bar and nav. Also card. I'm going to leave these. I don't think we need them. We didn't use any modal tooltips, popovers, or carousels in this specific website. And we did use some utility classes for sure. And we did use utilities responsive. I don't think we use background or spacing utility classes. And we're going to import the base. Now I'm going to save this and watch what will happen. Now we have access to bootstrap styles. You see, obviously it's a huge mess, but we have clearly the bootstrap grid and some other things involved. Now let's just go back here and let's go to our startup.css and just copy everything, copy everything verbatim because those are the styles we used. And let's add that to our base.scss. Save. That's going to compile to app.css, app refresh, and now we're starting to look pretty much back to normal. There was something missing here, the big image, and that's probably just because we're referencing the wrong path. So image stage, so it, that's a relative URL. There is no image folder within styles, so I just need to go back to the root. Well, since this is going to export to app.css, we're going to need to jump up a couple directories to get back to our root. So I'm just going to say dot dot slash dot dot slash. That will jump into our image and stage image. And uh, there it is. Now, the one other thing, it looks like the nav is missing some styles there. So that might be just something we didn't properly import in our app.scss. Maybe it is utilities background. That's probably what it is. Let me just save that and refresh. There it is. It was just a utility background style. And there it is. Simple minified version of our CSS without all this other stuff. Look at all the styles we didn't import. We didn't import these. We didn't import any of these, those, a couple in there. So now our app file is a lot more trim. So, I mean, obviously it's got a lot of code in here because Bootstrap has a ton of code, but compared to the actual, so let's see here. What have we got? We've got 2,600 lines of code of CSS in the minified or maybe not minified, the CSS in here. What have we got? If I go right down to the bottom, 6,200 lines of code. So you could see there, we just saved a whole bunch just by going this route. And so that is what I use for my professional workflow. I have my styles folder, I have my app, .scss, which pulls in all of the bootstrap imports, and then I uncomment them where I need them. I have variables, so now if I wanted to change, well, let me show you this, because you know you probably don't understand really how this works. What if we wanted to change the button color? Well, let's find buttons in here. Here they are, buttons. For each of bootstrap's buttons to find text background and border color. So here's button primary background. What if I change this line to pink and save? And there you go. So now we have a pink button. So whenever time, anytime you use uh, the primary button style or class, you will actually make it pink or whatever your brand's color is. And so that's kind of how, that's how this works. That's how the variables work. Basically you have your styles folder, like I said, and we have your base.scss where you just put your styles. You can also split these out into separate partials. We have the variables, the bootstrap variables that you can go ahead and customize 
and uncomment to overwrite the bootstrap variables. You have app.scss, which pulls in all of the bootstrap partials from the native download, in this case, Bower components, and you uncomment them to use what you need. And then it imports your, your base files at the very bottom down here. And at the very end, it will actually compile it to app.css, depending on how you set it up in your compiler. And in my case, I have it compiling to this folder here, which I pull in from startup.html right here. And so that's it for using my personal SaaS workflow for your professional projects. Hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you in the next lecture.